All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 7, Torque and Rotation. The section is 7.E, which is just on rotation. Here's the scenario. A meter stick is set on an edge of a table so that all but an eligible big bit of its length is off the edge of the table as shown. The meter stick is released from rest horizontally. The meter stick of mass M and its length L rotate um, the rotational inertia of the meter stick is around the end at I is equal to one third ML squared. Okay, so part A, you're just going to sketch the free body diagram. Okay, and you could read the rest if you would like to. So first of all, we know that the um, force of gravity is going to be act downwards, but where? Is it here, here, or here? Most likely it's uh, in the center. So here, it is going to be from the center down, and this is going to be called the force of gravity, right? There is opposite of it, and it would be right here on the force normal. Why is it here? Because this is where x is equal to 0. This is also uh, called the, where is it, axis of rotation, okay? And this is where it's also pinned down at, all right? Identify the point around the meter stick where it is going to be pivoting. So this is also where it's pivoting. Pin axis of rotation. You could also, this is where it's going to be pivoting as well. All right? It's when x equals to 0. Okay? Is there more than one choice for the pivot point? Uh, yes, you can. You could actually pick the, um, you could pick anywhere you want. Okay? But there's implications on that. So let me uh, write that for you. Okay? See, see what happens. All right, so this is what I wrote. I wrote that the um, pivot point here can be selected at only any location on the meter stick. That is correct. Uh, the current rotational inertia calculation is already given in the problem based on around the end, which is right here. I is equal to one third ml squared, uh, which suggests that the pivot point should be at the end point, either at here, x equals to zero, or you could do it at 100 centimeters here. Okay, if you pick a different point that is not on the end, so you could pick here, 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 or here. You would have to just recalculate the moment of inertia. All right. If you would like a um, more detailed explanation of what the moment of inertia is, you would have to watch uh, another video um, on the playlist that covers the moment of inertia. Okay. All right. Um, but I gave you some definitions here for the moment of inertia. Okay. So the moment of inertia in quick stance. Um, is the moment of inertia has the units of kilograms per meter squared, okay? Um, the moment of inertia for a rod can be one half ml squared or one third ml squared. In this case, the um, center of mass or the rotation is isolated here all in the center, okay? These are where all the masses is, but here the masses are through the end, all right? Okay, that's why it's different. Okay, this is just a short recap of moment of inertia. Watch the video if you like a more detailed explanation. All right, so determine the net torque um, about the meter sticks left end instantaneously after it has been released. Okay, so we should look at the um, torque scenario. Okay, the summation of all the torques is going to be equal to zero. And if you would like to know the torque, torque is equal to R, which is radius force perpendicular, or you could see this in the sine version, all right? So let's take a look. So the torque here, summation of the torques, okay, um, right here it's at equilibrium, okay? And what makes it up is that it is the torque, and what is pulling it down was the um, torque caused by the force of gravity and plus the torque of the force normal, okay? So if you would like me to draw it, okay, there is a torque going this way, okay? And there is a torque going down this way, all right? Okay, 
Now, let's see how, what are the forces that make up torque or what are the parts that make up this torque, okay? So, force gravity here is in the center. So, it is R times force of gravity, which is just um, mg. Okay, we need to know what R is. And we also need to know the angle of rotation. So if you would like to see how this one was, it's um, R force of gravity times sine of theta. Okay, this is going to be equal to, oops, here. Okay, you know what? I'm going to make this negative. Okay, so I'm going to make one of them negative. So I'm going to make this one negative okay so I could bring it to the other side so torque of force normal is going to be equal to RF sine theta okay so what is the R here what is the ra um, radius to this point so the radius if the whole thing is a hundred and this is in the center so the whole thing here is L okay so from here to here it would be L over two, all right? So the radius is L over two, okay? Fg is just mg. We don't have its values, and we just need to know what theta is, okay? Theta, in this case, is this angle, and we know this angle is what? Perpendicular, so theta here is gonna be 90 degrees, okay? All right, so theta is going to be equal to 90 degrees because the force is being applied perpendicularly. All right, so let's plug it in. R is equal to L over 2. Force of gravity, um, I can just write it that as mg. And the sine theta here is going to be sine of 90 degrees. But we know sine of 90 degrees. Notice sine of 90 degrees is just one so torque of fn so um, torque of all right so the torque here is going to be l over l over 2 mg there you go all right okay and this is just the net torque Okay, uh, because these balances out. Okay, so I can make this positive again. Here, I think I just want force of gravity. Okay, I just want force of gravity. Oh no, let me just erase this to make it better. All right, here, here you go. Okay, and okay. Again, again, one of them is gonna here. One of them is going to be negative, right? Because they're in opposite direction. Here, I just want the force of gravity is equal to that. Force of gravity is equal to that. For so the torque. Of, sorry, this is yeah the torque, the torque, the torque. Yep. So the torque is length over two times mass times gravity. Okay. Because it's at the uh, it's at the center where it cuts the L in half. All right. Good. Um, part D, you're going to start with uh, Newton's second law, and you're going to derive an expression for the angular acceleration. So the angular acceleration is given by the omega. So you want something in the end as omega equals to something because this is angular acceleration. And it tells us you want to start with Newton's second law in rotational form. Okay, so this is Newton's second law. Summation, uh, summation of force equals to mass times acceleration. But this is for a line. You want it in the rotational form. And let me give you the, here are the notes for the rotational form. Uh, it's right here, right? It's the summation of the torques is equal to that. And we know what the torque is equal to right here. It equals to I. Uh, which is the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. All right. Okay. So, so this becomes summation of the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. 
right? So what are the parts that um, make this up? Okay, we know that the we know that the torque here, okay, is done by the force of gravity. So we could say um, here the force of um, gravity. So the torque on on the force of gravity is going to be equal to that. So I just make this um, substitution. Okay, this is the torque by gravity okay and what is this we already know it. it we have it up here so we could write that substitution this was just l over 2 times mass times gravity and this is going to be equal to momentum of inertia and the alpha all right so just solve for the alpha okay well, we need to know what I is, and we have an equation for the I. We have the I as this right here, All right? So let's just grab that and write it over here, okay? Oops, right here, okay? That was the substitution, okay? So let's rewrite this. Bring this here, good. But this time, we wanna rewrite this so that we can have what I is. All right, I'm going to substitute that in blue. Okay. All right. This is one third mass length squared, close the parentheses, times the angular acceleration. Okay. Just making that substitution. All right. So, he, um, so, okay. Let's see here. <laughs> one half and the half here see what can we do so let's do some algebra multiply by two to both sides so you should get multiply two to both sides so that should cancel okay so you should have l m g is equal to m l squared over alpha um right because this is just multiplying by two divide by m divide by m Right, so it should get you LG over L squared alpha because I divide by the M's. Um, then here, divide by L, divide by L, okay. So you should have, um, oops, I made a mistake. This is three, okay. So let's just keep this one half here and one third here okay but it's the same algebra okay here um, I just divide by M okay to get rid of the mass um, one half here the blue should be one third here okay divide by the L's you should still have one half uh, G is equal to the blue one third um, L alpha Okay, because there's one L left, right? Um, multiply by three to both sides, you should get three over two. Times G is equal to L alpha, divide by L. So three over two, G over L is equal to alpha. I think there might be an easier way of writing this. Yeah, so you can write this as 3G over 2L is equal to alpha. So this is the rotational acceleration. Okay. And it started from all the way up here. Okay. So there you go. Um, lastly, you want to derive an expression for the linear acceleration at, of how far the meter stick is um, in terms of G, blah, blah, blah. So uh, what is the consequences? Explain in terms of what happened. Penny, if a penny would be placed at the end of the rod before it was released. Okay, so 
we have the original so we know that uh, it's 3 3 G over 2 L is equal to the angular acceleration of a meter stick okay and um, let's say we want to solve for um, what angular acceleration is okay so let's write this here deriving an expression for a meter stick in terms of g what is the consequence for your answer explain in terms of what happened if a penny is placed at the end of the rod okay so if the um, penny is placed on the end of the rod before it was released the penny would fall at a value of um, g why okay So this was the angular acceleration for the meter stick. And let me just give you the angular acceleration for the penny that's being fall, um, fell down. Uh, it's going to be just A over L. Okay. Um, this is for the penny. All right. Now you want to compare these two. So you're going to set up a, um, a ratio or proportion basically. Okay. So it's going to be um, this meter stick. The angular acceleration of the meter stick is going to be equal to the angular acceleration of the penny. Cross multiply and solve for um, the A. Okay. So cross multiply. This is going to be multiplied to that. So 3GL is equal to um, 2L times A. So 2L times A. Right. Then here, you want to divide by 2L, divide by 2L. You have 3G over 2 is going to be equal to A. So this is going to be the acceleration, okay? So the meter stick will appear to leave the penny behind uh, while it accelerates down and away from the penny, okay? If you think about the penny accelerating, the penny will accelerate um, at 10, right? The acceleration here for the meter stick is going to be 3, 2 times 10. And if you use a calculator, that should be um, around uh, 15 right? meters per second squared. This is the acceleration of the stick. And this is going to be the acceleration of the penny okay All right so there you go okay um, the only hard part here is understanding that this is the um, torque caused by the penny okay but there you go good here's the deviation if you would like to see it in full okay here's the moment of inertia issues here's the torques Okay. Here are the notes for the um, equilibrium of the torques. And then here are just the concept of where the torque exists on the meter stick. Okay. But uh, there you go. Those are all your solutions.